little boxing of some fish. So obviously it starts off with the box itself. Um, I standard with uh, USPS and just do the flat rate. If it fits the chips, no weight. Seems to be the less or the least amount of trouble setting this uh, setting this up and hassle. And plus, they pick it up. You just uh, wait for your mailman to come and hand it right to them. You don't have to take it up to the post office if you don't want. To. So, anyways, medium size flat rate seems to work good for. Oh, up to maybe uh, one one bag of uh, one medium-sized bag of fish, or if you're shipping shrimp or something smaller or whatever, you can get the smaller bags and fit a couple of them in here. Um, at any rate, so far this has worked out real well for me. So I'm not going to go through all the details of putting a box together. I think most of you can figure that much out for yourselves. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm using a, uh, let me take you off the tripod here for a minute, a uh, new packing material. I uh, got a package that uh, somebody had sent me with this. It's, uh, it's a retasked, let's see if you can see that. You get it at Lowe's. It's a retasked denim and cotton material, and it comes in a, a bale this size for about twelve dollars. And um, as you can see, it's an insulation. So I liked when I got a package with this in it. Fish all stayed nice and toasty warm, and. It doesn't have all the itch of uh, fiberglass insulation, which I can't stand and I'm allergic to. The dust of it just drives my nose crazy. So, basically, uh, get a nice little bed of this in there. Cover the bottom. And uh, now we need to go get the fish. So, see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm not going to walk you through the whole process of uh, catching a fish. Once again, I believe that most of you are capable of that. And if you're not, you shouldn't be shipping them and breeding them. Um, at any rate, this is the tank they're coming from. This is Mom and Dad's tank. Um, there's Mama and there's Daddy. Um, this is one of the uh, grow-out tanks. And... Uh, you can see there's, well they're kind of hiding right now because I just scooped two of them out. Just put their home back in order. They're huddled around all over the place. Just a standard 10 gallon with some sponge filters. Um, I've already caught the two of them. And uh, you can see there's the two of them right there. Sorry about the glare. Try to get a little offset there. But uh, use a standard medium sized net. Uh, take all the the uh, plastics and plants and rocks and all that stuff out and uh, I raise the filter which is stuck to the back with the suction cup raise it up that's the only one that just stays in there uh, to reduce the stress level as much as possible and just use the net to corral them and tap on the front glass corral them up against the front glass and tap on the glass so they scoot back in the net put them in the specimen container. So, now we go to bagging. Okay, so now we're in the bagging stages here. Um, <coughs> when you get in bags, ship these guys in. Um, I have successfully shipped them in store bags, you know, leftovers from PetSmart, Petco, or your local pets shop, which, whatever they use. And some of them use better than others. Uh, I don't recommend the Petco or the PetSmart. Uh, I think they get the 
smallest, cheapest bags and thinnest bags they can possibly get away with to get them to your house. Um, uh, you can go online and find these bags all over eBay and Amazon and all that. Uh, you want to get, uh, I believe it's a 3 mil uh, at least thickness of the bag. Um, these are a little bit longer than what I normally, but that's what was available at the time and it was a good price on them. So. But um, you can see, I think they're uh, 6 inch by, oh, probably about 2 feet, <laughs> 18 inches, something like that. 6 inch by uh, at least a foot is what you probably want to look for, for uh, medium, small to medium fish. Um, and, of course, I always double bag, so pull two bags off. Set them over here and get this back out of the way. And yes, I'm a little anal. I always like to try to keep my bags inside of a bag to keep you know, any foreign objects off of them, dust and all the stuff that can be generated in-house. Being in the springtime right now with the pollen going nuts, I try to uh, keep them as clean as possible. At any rate, get in and open your bag up. I'm going to take and roll it down. Try to pour it into that long, tall bag you're going to spill. So, roll it down to a manageable size. And uh, when I ship fish, I always, uh, it took me a while to find it, but you can find it on the internet, uh, Methylene Blue. Um, I'll put it in the description below. Um, uh, I got it in a big bottle. This is just a little bottle that I put it in so that I could, you know, bring it in here and everything. But uh, not that expensive. If you look around, uh, you can get, uh, I, I can't remember the name brand. Uh, I will stick the name of it in the uh, description below before I post this film. Uh, but uh, it came to me, they shipped it in a powdered form. So you get the bottle and the powder is already in the bottle. And so that keeps it down on the weight. And when you get it, you just add some RO or distilled water to it to fill the bottle up, shake it up real good, let it sit overnight or whatever, and, and you're good to go. But um, I put it in a little dropper bottle. And uh, methylene blue is good at calming. It's also good to uh, ward off uh, bacterial diseases and stuff. Being that you just scoop the fish out, they're a little stressed out, they're going to be going in a bag, into a box, and shipped wherever in the country, you bounced around and shipping carts and planes and everything like that, they're going to get pretty stressed. So uh, I always put a couple of drops of methylene blue in. Believe me, it doesn't take much. Two drops of this stuff will blue this water up considerably. Uh, just uh, It's kind of a pre precaution type thing. Uh, I think it does them some good. So Let me just pour those little guys in there. Set that off to the side. Bring my bag back up. And once again, for those of you who have done this many times, uh, not trying to be offensive to you, but for those who are new to the hobby and haven't really done this that much, so this is the easiest way I've found to do it. Uh, you may have a way that's easier. Um, if you do, leave it in the comments below. But uh, what I generally do is just bring the bag all the way up to this top, use four fingers to kind of spread it out, and then with one hand, just a quick grasp and snatch, and then twist. And we'll bring that back around, and wouldn't you know, I don't have any i have to use this way oversized rubber band, which is going to take forever to twist, but I'll just try to entertain you while I'm doing this. Normally I have the size rubber bands that you see at the store, but fortunately I seem to have run out of them. I have to put that on my list, but you know, most rubber bands will work. 
cut off the extra. It's just extra baggage. Okay, so got the fishies bagged up. Now, bring the box back in. We'll tuck these guys down in here. So, this isn't always as easy as it looks, believe me. Now, I have seen some people where they'll fold up the corners and tape them off so that the fish can't get caught up in the corner or the lower part of the bag. Uh, these fish, I believe, are big enough that I don't have to really worry about that. If you're shipping smaller fish, though, might be a good idea. Um, as I said, I don't have to worry about it with these guys, but it's something to look into if you want to go out on the Internet and look around for some other bagging uh, videos. Some of them will show you where they tape up the corner so that the fish can't get caught in those corners. But you get it started over the top. And once you get it worked down in there a little bit, it starts to take off on its own, usually. Might get a time to Try out the fast forward feature on this or the high speed so you don't have to look at all this. Okay. So, now we got that guy. step forward, two steps back. Come back over to our insulation bag. I know a lot of this is tedious. And for those of you who have done this before and are just watching it to see if there's anything that I do that's different, I apologize. This is mainly aimed at those who have not yet done it. And like I say, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. A lot of people will take some of the fiberglass insulation and wrap it around the bags or wrap them in newspapers, pack them with peanuts. Uh, I've gotten them all kinds of different ways shipped to me. Uh, shredded newspaper or shredded paper through a you know regular shredder or whatever. Um, and for the most part, in summertime or in the fair weather times, I think that's usually just fine. But being that these are going up north, where it's still kind of chilly and gets down close to freezing at night, I'm going to be doing the extra mile here. And actually in the summertime, this insulation can kind of come in pretty handy too because in that case, you're not trying to keep the fish warm. You're actually trying to keep the heat from the sun when they're sitting in the mail truck. Because as we know, those mail trucks do not have air conditioning. And when they're sitting in the mail truck, they can uh, be protected a little bit from the 90 and 100 degree weather if you happen to be shipping into the, that kind of area. So... Got them all boxed up like that. Uh, this particular customer did request a heat pack. And uh, there we go. 
Uh, these standard heat packs, you can get them at uh, any uh, action. I bet you can get them offline too. Uh, as a matter of fact, you probably save some, save yourself some money if you buy them online. Get them in bulk. But uh, you can also get them uh, from your adventure stores and stuff. You know where they got kayaks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, these particular kind, uh, as soon as you cut them open and release them into oxygen, they uh, start to heat up automatically. Um, I always take and wrap it. A piece of newspaper it tends to help. I think it tends to help distribute the heat a little bit better. It's not quite as much of a hot spot. But uh, let's wrap it up like that. Sides. Okay. Now, along with, and I gotta find them. I was printing out a packing list, which is this guy from PayPal. That's how it was paid for. Try to send my customer some sort of uh, sheet that uh, identifies how they paid for it. And why is it I can never find one I need when it's time to ship? Okay, so hold on a second. I'm going to pause you for a minute and while I find these things. Okay, got it. And we're of course downstairs. I always send a, a sheet with anything I ship. Uh, it's got a business card on it, uh, basic care, packaging, shipping, and uh, live arrivals guarantee. Gives uh, the parameters I set for that. So, take one of these. The shipping label. Put it up on top. Okay. And once again, I assume that that everybody knows how to pack a box and tape it down. some better than others. Used to be pretty good at this when I worked in the shipping department, but that was many moons ago. So I'll probably edit most of this out, but one across the middle seam, one across the middle perpendicular to that, and then two across the edges. And, uh, I forgot to do that on the bottom. Better safe than sorry. Because I don't want to have to Explain to an, a customer why the box fell apart in the shipping process. If it gets to them damaged, it's going to be because whoever shipped it, the shipping, they goofed it up, not me. Okay, um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, but once again, for the newbies, um, if you uh, pay, if you do your payment through PayPal, they have a function in there when the payment is received. If you look, you can go in and print your own label. Of course, they do charge. Uh, you'll have to have a credit card or a 
PayPal account and they'll charge the money straight out of it uh, for your shipping. Um, if you don't have a PayPal account or don't have a credit card or whatever like that, uh, uh, of course you can always just go up to the uh, post office and they'll label it for you and everything and charge you, but it does cost an extra dollar or two to have them do it. Um, you can save yourself a buck or whatever by printing them out yourself. Um, USPS will also allow you to go onto their website and uh, once again you have to have a PayPal account or a credit card or something that you can charge it to and uh, print out your own label. And uh, I imagine FedEx and uh, UPS and all the other shippers also do this, but uh, at any rate, uh, you can get stickers, which I did go out and buy some. I haven't used them yet because I'm not sure exactly. Uh, on the USPS site, it just prints out the label that you need to ship it with on the one half side because it's uh, obviously you print out on a full eight and a half by eleven sheet. Um, the stickers I got are two per, so one half and uh, another half, so you get two shipping labels out of it. On the PayPal site, though, the way it prints out is it prints out the one side with the uh, shipping label, and the other side is like a set of instructions. So if you use PayPal to print your shipping labels, you would be basically ruining the other sticker because it would come out printing a bunch, bunch of instructions on it. So since I used it for this, I uh, just used regular paper. Also, when taping these things up, there's a barcode and there's one of those, uh, oh, I picked, picked, a, picked a code or whatever. Those little things you can use with your uh, camera phones and stuff to scan. Uh, you don't want to cover that with tape. Because sometimes when they run the scanners over and it's covered with tape and your tape's a little off or whatever, it'll screw up the scan on it. And they don't like that. So, they're all boxed up. Shipping label is on. And I also went out and just found a, uh, well, I actually made this up in Photoshop. Just typed in the thing, arrows and stuff. You don't have to do this. Uh, you can also just take a, mark, uh, a Sharpie and write on the sides or whatever like this. Um, I did have an a incident recently where uh, I shipped out to the Midwest and uh, they kind of got left on a dock at one of the USPS shipping stations and the customer was looking for them and she was trying to describe to the post office what the box looked like which I told her was just a standard flat rate medium box and she had asked me whether I had put these on or written on it anywhere and I didn't. So I decided from now on I am going to be I'm going to get some stickers from these or, uh, eventually but I'm going to be taping on live fish and stuff so I can identify the box a little better if it does get shuffled into the wrong bin or whatever during shipping. After all we all know that these are perishable. So you want to make sure that you uh, put something on there to identify. Okay, so people, that's how I package my sh fish for shipping. Hope this was useful to you. Hope you were able to get something out of it. Uh, if you uh, do happen to uh, raise epistogrammas, and they happen to be of uh, other than the 
cockatoides flavor. Uh, I am uh, definitely in the market looking for some good looking uh, Agassiz and Borelli's and McMaster's and many others. So uh, if you happen to raise them and you got some for sale or whatever, uh, put something down in the comments or get in touch with me. Because uh, especially if you uh, would like to get into some cockatoides and stuff, we can work out a trade that way. Both of us end up happy. Anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, we will see you soon.